So believe it or not, Florida's electorate has spoken and by an amazing 69% they have voted yes to Amendment 13 which essentially makes Greyhound Racing outlawed in the state of Florida as of 2020. So you would think this is a good thing, right? Of course, everyone wants to protect the dogs, but the dog people themselves are actually freaking out just a tiny bit. People are freaking out mostly because they are afraid of overreach on behalf of the government. And that means that this law that has been passed will continue to affect other working and sporting groups like the AKC, the American Kennel Club, and even people who like to do things like lure coursing with their pets. This cannot be further from the truth. So today I want to talk a little bit about what Amendment 13 actually means and talk about some of those myths that are being spread all over the internet. So the amendment is essentially shutting down 11 dog tracks in Florida, which is more than all the other dog tracks in the United States combined. Florida now falls in step with 40 other states in the United States that ban dog racing. So a lot of people are also upset about the fact that such strong armed legislation has come down on the Florida dog racing industry and instead of working to perhaps increase legislation and help the dogs out a little more, they strong armed and just shut down the entire industry. The Florida racing industry is not only the biggest racing industry in the United States, but they are also renowned for treating their dogs in less than stellar fashion. The Florida racing tracks are also unfortunately well known for drugging up their dogs as well. 2016-17 was a record-breaking year for drugging violations in the Greyhound racing industry, seeing a 350% increase over the year prior. Hundreds of dogs over the years tested positive for all kinds of cocaine metabolites, opiates. I mean, we were even seeing oxycodone being used in some cases on these dogs. It's no surprise that the president of the Florida Greyhound Racing Association was also found guilty of drugging violations. Now, when confronted with the issue about drugging dogs for the racing industry, instead of stepping back a little bit and showing some compassion for the dogs, the majority of the racing industry took up arms and brought the fight to the state. The racing industry pushed back by fighting for legislation which allowed them a certain amount of drugs to be placed into the systems of these dogs to increase their capacity as athletes. They've even legally fought for their right to use steroids on the female dogs to prevent them from going into heat. Now, while of course there are great operators in Florida that take care of their dogs and manage the tracks well, unfortunately it's the bad ones that are really running away with all the press and attention here, which is why we're seeing this kind of legislation. As long as people continue to skirt their responsibilities and duties towards the animals, we're going to see ongoing sweeping legislation like this. Every opportunity over many decades has been awarded to the industry to treat the dogs better, very simply. But they dropped the ball consistently and now we are seeing the results of that. So let's go over what Amendment 13 actually states. Amendment 13 does not affect American Kennel Club events or lure coursing competitions or other AKC timed events. AKC sanctioned events do not allow wagering, so they are not subject or conducted pursuant to those laws. Prizes received for placements in competitive events are not proceeds of a wager. So if you have a competitive pet that engages in sporting events like lure coursing and, and other sanctioned events, they are not going to be affected by this law. That means you can go ahead with your lure coursing, you can go ahead with hunting events, all of these things, and not be affected by this law. And if you are concerned that animal rights groups are going to get a leg up through a law like this, this is why you need to be a lot more active in your local legislation. Make sure you're a part of the solution and not the problem. If you have genuine concerns about these things, support the organizations that are going to lobby for laws in your favor. The biggest advantage that animal rights groups like HSUS and PETA have is that they have a large capacity to lobby for new laws to be placed in their favor. We have to counter that and luckily for most sporting events and hunting events, you are going to have the support of very large lobbying organizations like the NRA in your favor. So you probably have nothing to worry about as long as you get your shit together. 
Okay, so you've all seen the posts where people are panicking that now we need to find a home for 8,000 dogs. That is simply not the case. Right now, at best estimate, there are about 3,500 dogs present on Florida tracks. Now, keep in mind that the tracks have until 2020 to put this law into effect that effectively bans the dog racing. So that means that the tracks have two years to find homes for these dogs. A lot of people are saying, hey, PETA and HSUS should get involved in finding homes for these dogs, but that's simply not the case. Remember, these are lobbying groups. They're gonna fight against your rights. They're not here to clean up the mess of an industry that's overproduced too many animals. Now, when it comes time for these dogs to actually find a home, you are not going to be flooded by thousands and thousands of greyhounds. As a matter of fact, every single greyhound that races usually ends up being adopted out and placed in a home. And that has been going on for many decades now. So you're gonna see about roughly today about 90 to 95% of dogs being adopted out by greyhound adoption groups that work together with the tracks. 5% of those dogs tend to disappear. They're usually just euthanized, especially if there's some kind of an injury in place. Many times these dogs do not receive the veterinary care that they're supposed to, which is why we are seeing legislation like this take effect. Keep in mind too that the dog owners obviously are going to be protecting their investments, so they might continue doing business in some of the other states where dog racing is still legal. As of right now, there are six other tracks. Now, don't get me wrong, I do have some concerns about some of the influx of dogs that will be coming in as a result of everybody panicking with this amendment coming through. And one of the things that scares me most is the fact that very few people know that there is a black market for greyhounds. No, seriously, there is an actual black market for greyhounds. What you may not know about greyhounds is that they are highly sought after as blood donors for the pet industry. You see, most greyhounds are universal donors. That means that they are compatible with most other blood types. So in the case of pet dogs that require blood transfusions, nine times out of 10, you will find that blood source from greyhounds. And just like everything else, there are really good sources for the blood supply, but we also have to be aware of the fact that there are some really terrible sources. So one example of a really good blood supplier is the University of Pennsylvania's veterinary school. They operate a mobile clinic where essentially they head out to the pet's home, which is pre-registered with the university, and they will then take the blood donation under the supervision of the pet's owner, and they'll usually be rewarded with some kind of incentive like free dog food or discounted veterinary care. Now, of course, one of the important things to note here is that in these cases, pet owners are, of course, willingly subjecting their dogs to help out other pets in need by becoming blood donors. Now, there are also bad places. One such place is renowned and operates out of the Austin, Texas area. They currently hold approximately 200 greyhounds that are used for almost daily blood donations. Where it gets really sketchy is that past investigations have shown that this place operating out of Austin and a few other places might have originally gotten their greyhounds by some less than appropriate means. Greyhounds are really special dogs. They make excellent pets, but it doesn't always work out. So sometimes families that intend to adopt um, might find that it doesn't work out and they have to give the dog back. Unfortunately, some people don't feel comfortable going back to the original rescue group for whatever reason, and they might find an alternate rehoming situation for their dogs. Companies like this will come in and promise to rehome their pet to a loving home, um, but the fine print says that they'll usually be used for a while for blood donations, and that can really be for any amount of time. Greyhound rescue groups have tried to get into these blood donation facilities and they have not succeeded. Um, so they don't really even know the conditions of some of these animals. Now one of the reasons that I take all of this to heart is the fact that 20 years ago I was involved personally in Greyhound Rescue. I spent many nights waiting for those trailers to come to unload shivering, disoriented and scared dogs and process them and place them into foster and eventually permanent homes. I have personally kept five greyhounds as pets, fostered well over 25 of them and found homes for literally hundreds of animals. I have seen the results of this industry firsthand and it is devastating on these dogs. I have seen the results of pretty horrible conditions. I have seen the results of them getting no dental care. I have seen the results of healed injuries that were unattended to and neglected. I have seen the results of the racing industry and they are not good. I am not impressed at all. You might have to excuse me if I seem a little biased in this issue, but I think ultimately it's a great thing that the racing industry is going to be crippled in the state of Florida where it has proven for many, many years that they are not really there for the animals. 
there are going to be a lot less dogs being churned through this system now that the racing industry is no longer going to be operating. So we're not going to have to look for as many homes for Greyhounds in the long run, although it may seem that over the next two years there's going to be a bit of a rush on them. After that, only a fraction of adoptive homes will be necessary in the long run. And people who really want to keep Greyhounds and do what they are meant to do, which is hunt, will have no problem doing that. As a matter of fact, you will now have much more quality control over the breedings of the dogs. Greyhounds are incredibly majestic animals, and honestly, it's my opinion that many people don't even deserve to keep them. They are pivotal to human development. They have hunted for us for decades. They've helped us be what we are as humans. I think we owe it to them that if we need to take a step back and stop exploiting them for money, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Although, in the greater scheme of things, a lot of dogs and cats are abused worldwide, taking them off the tracks will make sure that a lot less of them are indeed abused. Because although it is a small percentage overall, there really should be no percentage. We should take every available opportunity to stop animal abuse where it occurs. And this in the future will show that we really care about the animals that we're fighting so hard to keep and so hard to love. So do yourself a favor, inform yourself with facts when it comes to this whole Greyhound issue and know that this is a great thing for the dogs. So I definitely want to hear what it is you have to say. Comment below and let me know what you think about the Greyhound racing ban in Florida.